Hello, I'm JW. Uh, today we've got a couple of old circuit breakers to have a look at. Uh, these have actually been sent in, and they're from the Czech Republic, or previously known as Czechoslovakia. Now, so these have been sent in, and uh, here's the person who sent them in. Uh, that's uh, not quite sure how you pronounce the name there, but uh, thanks very much for those to be sent in there. And uh, as mentioned, these are from the Czech Republic. Now, I have already opened this, of course, and uh, here's the circuit breakers in question. And as you can see, they're uh, a fairly old type of item. And have a look on the side here. You can actually see there that it does say made in Czechoslovakia. And uh, both of these are the same rating. We've got uh, 6 amps and uh, 500 volts. And again, the same one over there. Uh, you've got the terminals on the top and on the bottom. And we've got some sort of sealing compound on the screws on the bottom there, presumably for some sort of setting or adjustment when they were manufactured. Uh, casing is a sort of dark brown Bakelite type material, fully enclosed, and uh, these are actually quite sizeable compared to a lot of modern circuit breakers. Just get the uh, ruler there, and you'll see that they're sort of nearly four inches in height, and sort of three odd inches in depth there, and uh, widthwise about an inch wide. Now these have a nice uh, switch action on these, and uh, it requires actually very little pressure to operate, but they have a nice solid action, so there's no doubt that it's uh, in the position that you put it in, and that actually feels a lot better than a lot of actual new circuit breakers. So let's have a look inside one and see how these are constructed. And uh, They've got uh, screws on the outside here, so it should be fairly easy to open, one of which of course is sealed with that sort of red sealing compound. Now these have obviously been taken out of some old uh, installation, and we've actually got a bit of wire left in the bottom here, See the sort of black insulated uh, wire there, and there's another bit in the top. And in terms of the actual fitting, it's a single screw here with a sort of a cage type arrangement, or that sort of plate that presses down. So we'll just uh, undo that, and then we'll just remove that little bit of wire. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this wire is, but as you can see there, it's uh, shiny silver in colour. So there's the wire, so let's just try cutting that. And I say it's actually shiny silver all the way through, so that would suggest it's uh, possibly aluminium. That uh, may require a little bit of a testing on that later. Now the other end of the uh, circuit breaker there is pretty much the same arrangement. I'll just say a sort of a screw and a uh, plate there just to press against the wire and secure it in position, and again that's the same sort of wire we had on the top there. It's just a single uh, insulated wire, and I'd say quite possibly made of aluminium. Now the little plate there is captive, so it's not going to actually drop out and uh, get lost. It is of course fixed in there reasonably well. Now in terms of these being mounted in, obviously there was a screw here, and also one at the bottom which would have held it into whatever cabinet or enclosure it went into. These are not the uh, rail or din rail type mounting thing, so obviously it would have had to been screwed in individually, you know, in a row with others and other devices. Now let's uh, try opening this, so we've got a screw here on the side, and they need to go through to those square captive nuts on the back. Of course this one will require a bit of uh, digging out. It's got the two screws there which go through and thread into those little mounting pieces on either side. So take those out as well. So the screws moved and then we should be able to take the lid off and we can have a look inside. So the top there is just a single uh, moulded plate. And so it looks like some sort of uh, phenolic resin type plastic, uh, sort of bakelite or something very similar. But fairly brittle uh, type stuff and again very thick compared to a lot of the modern ones made out of that sort of other more flexible plastic. So that's the uh, cover there, and again that says uh, made in Czechoslovakia on the front there. We've also got A2 and A1 just indicating the two contacts, and a uh, number there, possibly a serial number or something, 134014. 
although the other one is the same number on, so uh, perhaps a model number or something. So inside the device here, we've got uh, obviously the uh, two terminals at the top and the bottom, and uh, the lever here, which is the switch mechanism. And this is actually quite a nice uh, switching mechanism, certainly in the uh, feel of it from the outside. A bit difficult to show with the uh, cover removed. And we've got looks like the coil here for the uh, trip mechanism. And we've got it just coming in in the full load current. We'll actually go via that coil and, of course, uh, exit to the other part of that. This will be the arc chamber here at the top. And you would expect there to be some sort of a uh, thermal element here as well, as in a uh, biometallic strip or similar. And, of course, that's just going to be a magnetic part. Uh, let's just have a closer look there. Now here's inside, and uh, it's quite an interesting design actually. We've got the arc chamber here with the five plates, which just fits around the contact in there. Just remove that because it's easier to show what's inside. And they say just metal plates there, and this is a sort of fibre cardboardy type material, and so that just slots in there. So the contact here, which is in the closed position, which is basically surrounded by these metal plates, so any kind of arcing here would be dissipated by those. And I'd say the coil here is the magnetic trip part, so of course your current is going to come in via the terminal, through the coil, and back through here, and across this bar here, and this is actually the thermal element here, and that comes across to the middle point here, and then the current of course will continue via the springs here, around the bottom there, up to the top there, and of course out through the top contact. Now, I'm not sure which way around these were actually done in the installation, but in our case, uh, whether it comes in the top or bottom doesn't really make a huge difference. Now this is actually rather difficult to show because the parts tend to spring out and uh, pop all over the place when it's uh, activated, but the uh, switch at the moment is in the down position which is for off, and you see the contact is of course open there. And notice down in here that you can see there's that brass peg comes down and actually goes through this plate here, and this is actually part of the trip mechanism and that's actually tripped either by the coil being energised and pulling that plate down, or the biometallic strip here bending and of course again pulling the plate down. And so this is actually in the off position, but note that that's uh, actually locked in there. And then if we move it to the on position, hold these parts in, and notice the contact is now closed, and notice this is still locked in, so this uh, piece here actually is uh, locked through those plate there at the bottom and obviously that's what allows you to hold the contact in position there. Now when this trips, and I'll uh, just do this in a moment, but uh, what we've got here is this plate will pull down and because of the spring arrangements in the middle here this will actually move this way and then pull the contact down and disconnect it. And then at the same time because this has now moved forward it will actually press against this plastic piece here and push that forward so that it will actually protrude from the front of the device and that will be an indicator to show that it had actually tripped rather than someone just switching it off. And that's on a yeah, sort of a spring-loaded arrangement. So if that part is protruding it indicates that the thing has tripped rather than just, say, just uh, switching off the thing via the switch at the front. As I say we saw there if it's on the uh, off position then the pin here actually remains in place, even though the actual contact can actually move to the off position. Now I've just uh, trip this thing with the screwdriver here, and it's very likely to uh, ping out all over the place. So that releases, and then the pin, as you see, will swing back, and then the contact course will open, and then that will press against this piece here, and then push that forward obviously indicating that the thing has actually tripped. And note that the uh, contact is now open. And then this piece here is reset by simply the fact that when you actually pull the lever down, see it will actually go back into that position there. And again, that's now locked in. And notice that's actually turning it to the off position there. So it's one of these where you have to uh, switch it off fully before you can actually turn it on again, otherwise of course the little latching thing won't actually work. So that's again in the off position, and if we move it to the on position, then the thing will spring up there. And again you can uh, turn the thing on and off by the lever itself. 
and note that the actual pin here for the trimming thing remains engaged regardless of whether it's in the sort of manual on or off positions there. And again in the on position, if the thing is then tripped by the bar pulling down, then that will swing back, poke the uh, little piece forward. And notice the actual lever handle is actually independent of the rest, so although that shows us tripped, it's still in the on position there. And then the resetting is actually by pulling it down to re-engage the piece there, and then it's turning it on again to put the contact back into the on position. And a couple of other things here, we've got at the bottom these two adjustment uh, screws, presumably used when the thing is being manufactured. And as you see, one goes via the magnetic coil, which is presumably just a uh, metallic slug inside, and of course varying the length of that will adjust the actual point at which the magnetic field will trip the device. And then this one will be for the thermal element. Again, it's just that screw coming up onto this sort of anvil type thing here. Again, that will adjust the uh, force obviously on the biometallic strip up here. And of course it's been gunked over with that sort of red material to obviously lock it in place and prevent people from tampering with it after it's been assembled. So that's a couple of 6 amp circuit breakers there from uh, Czechoslovakia or at least uh, made there when it was still called that. And I'll do another video on these later outside and uh, get these things to actually trip. As it be quite interesting to see the little uh, button thing uh, poke out there, the indicator to show that it's tripped. And then you can see how the actual uh, resetting mechanism actually works. But certainly from looking inside it'll be sort of in the on position and in the event of an overload then the little button should uh, protrude indicating it's tripped and then it should be a question of turning off and on again to reset the thing. And the wiring that was in there, the little uh, pieces of, it's been just been cut off obviously, is actually aluminium, so sort of shiny silver all the way through, and it's certainly non-magnetic, so aluminium uh, insulated wiring there, so that's certainly something you don't see in the UK. The aluminium was used here for a very short period, but uh, literally only just a few years, and the number of installations that in is extremely tiny, all of which I think have long been replaced with copper or something since then, but uh, yeah, that's definitely aluminium wiring solid and certainly not tin copper or something similar. So I'll say, do another video on these so we can actually get this to trip, but so we'll do that outside at a later date, as it's unfortunately uh, pouring with rain today. And until next time, thanks for watching.